Hey, what's up guys? Warren Ness here. Wanted to record a, a video for you guys. I wasn't able to record one in a while, so I figured, why not? So, this one's in regards to kind of, I don't know how I want to describe it, but like kind of sales, but I also want to touch on some design stuff. Especially we got some classes coming up in the fall slash winter. Um, and... In doing so, I, in these classes, I really want to emphasize the hands-on portion of it. Some of it is um, complex at first, but once I think a they can get their hands on it and get over that fear factor, I notice that's when people really start using the craft for its true medium. And I'll describe in in this in this video here. So let's just jump right in. So it was able to compile some pictures before was able to record the video, and this one came. Um, this one was of interest. Why? Because it has. It's got a multitude of different elements that that could that concrete could be substituted for. Okay, meaning. Let me get a pen here. Meaning, we got retaining walls. And so I'll kind of use a orange. It's kind of a retaining wall, and I think it ties into the main um, basement wall or form wall. Okay, same thing here. It's this little embankment wall. Could be totally vertical carved concrete. And I think you'd have a little more design options in terms of the stone, the formatting of the stone, the color scale, sizing, etc. So there's one facet. Okay. So and we're gonna put that as retaining wall. Okay. Let's turn that off. Make another layer. Let's pick a blue color. All right. Pretty simple, it's probably pretty evident for you guys, but the, you got the planner right here. It doesn't The blue doesn't look too good on the green. Excuse me, I'm going to take a drink of water. All right. So, got the planter. Okay. Now that could be either um, casted. GFRC. Or carved. Right? That could be on site. Piece of foam. Depending on the aesthetics, we 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 would need to know more info, um, you know, before we decide that. So there's the planner. Okay, moving forward, we got column bases. Let's go to a green color. So these items right here. I think they got four columns. Okay. So three column bases. Same thing. Bells and whistles. You guys can control the knobs on all of that. Sizing, patterns, formats, scale, texture. Um, I think if you're going to rival a particular existing material out there that's that's functioning well and performing well in the industry, I think you you got to up the ante a little bit in terms of what you're bringing to the table. Does it does it does, is it does it contain more color? Does it does it tie into the house better 
do you have more design freedom? The interior designers or architects are specking anything out. Maybe they don't know that, that your product exists. So we're kind of we we're kind of right in the hands of time ourselves, right? On looks and um, finishes moving forward into the future. All right. So, all right. That'll close out column bases. All right. Okay. Obviously, we got the flat work, right? Let's go to red. A lot of the trainings over the years, I've I've trained companies, and this is probably the most popular skill that's. Um, been kind of the on-ramp into different facets of concrete. So they've already had an existing company functioning well, doing flat work, footings, structural concrete, etc. And they're looking to ride that next wave, next gen, and add different skills or products to their existing fleet of goods. So Let's not forget the flat work. Or this could be stamped concrete. So this is your entry. You you know, you could have your business for 10 years. You've already got an existing Rolodex of contacts slash customers. You could definitely add a few more facets to the already existing concrete. If you already have a bucket of trials and the know-how and understand how slump works and this works and you know um, the ins and outs of concrete then you got your feet wet and adding these little by little uh, I think is only going to strengthen your business okay so that close out flat work okay so it's kind of a broad overview just oh lastly let me not forget is the other plan is up front. Let's use a yellow. Why not? So you got, I think you got three of these. Those could be wood, but let's just say they're concrete. Why not? Um, it's going to last longer. So, so what do we have here? We got um, one, two, three, four, five. So we got five items, and if you want to add a sixth, that could be concrete curving, which doesn't exist on this photo, but why not? Got a curb machine, throw it in. And then that could be colored, same thing with the same color composition as the walls, you know? So this could be all one nice homogenous um, working system or an aesthetic finish. How it all complements one another, what the planning schedule is there, what kind of shrubs are they planning, and see how those colors can complement the house and the space and the environment it's in. All right. All right, so that kind of gives you a broad overview of, of goods that could be sold using vertical decorative concrete or just concrete as a whole. So let me delete all these layers. Done with that. And turn that off. Okay, here's another photo. I thought this was interesting because obviously it's lays, it laid out nice. Um, you got some of the... the the granite, the streamstone granite, and you got the boulders in the front. I think the boulders are really nice because they're sharp looking. Um, but this could definitely be enhanced, though. Um, it's a nice photo, but definitely could be enhanced. Uh, I'll kind of give you my rough overview. So these rocks in the foreground, I think could be a little bit bigger. Um, that could be personal flavor, but, you know, obviously the bigger the rock the more costly it becomes processing it, right? Got to get it in, 
got to put it on a truck, got to deliver it, it's cost of fuel, insurances, etc., labor, right? So I think these are too small. These, these could have been a little more sizable, I think. And maybe just, you know, a small one right there, something like that. And then maybe one down here. Okay. Secondly, um, I think the curbing is nice. I think the where the curbing industry has evolved is now they're offering textures and colors. The, the classic gray does look nice depending on the architecture the system is going in. But this could be an upsell as well. So, just an interesting um, detail there. Turn those notes off. Turn that layer. Next one. Okay, these are the planners. This is kind of what I want to get into. Um, as we, I'm going to be offering training on these on a lot of my classes so students can get their hands wet um, doing those and it could also take them to go I think they're a good small representation of what can be done large scale because all the same steps do apply on something like this and I'll illustrate let me go to the pencil just because it feels more natural on the pad okay so you got three boulders here Let's just draw a circle here. And I'm drawing this one right here. And I'm not, I don't have to be 100% here. You can see I kind of rounded this off, but that dirt line, you know, could be right here. So you're only seeing this, this top edge. It looks like that edge goes straight right into the dirt right there. All right, rewind that. Okay. Back to the shape. Now, what's important is understanding the shape. You know, if you were, if you were to wrap this boulder, let me switch to a red. If you were to wrap this boulder with, like, rope or twine, what would that, what would that twine look like on there? And you have these eccentric lines. Right, let's go like this. So you can get a feel of the topography of that rock now, and that's real important. You know, that's a real soft, smooth rock, which I'm kind of liking these days. I think everything's been real hard and rigid. I think the soft adds a nice touch, um, especially for a planter, because you do have something organic growing out of it. I think that. Um, I think that the sharp rock planters do look good, but I don't know. It's personal flavor. It's iced tea or coffee, you know. So, anyway, what I wanted to show you with the white pencil, and I'm going to go ahead and put some topography lines on this as well. You know, again, it doesn't have to be exact. It's getting the rough shape of the, the boulder. So you can see it's got kind of a flat spot up here. I'll put some shading to kind of, you know, right there. That would be a nice entry for uh, a planner, I think. You know, you can cut the opening out, you know, something like that. Let me see if I could um, put some tone on this. Because otherwise it just looks like lines. Put a shadow down here. The targets are going black and white here. Yeah. Or reverse. Get the eraser tool here. Clean that up. Alright. No more erasing. Now I'll just go back in with the pencil, clean it up. So you know now I get to, I get to find the shape now. You know that that'll be the area that your horticulture will be growing out of, right? 
something like that. Looks like a piece of garlic right now with the with the lines on it, but we are using chalk on the chalkboard. Right. So I think these are good exercises to help you nail down some shapes. And again, like I said, I know this shape looks funny because you're seeing the bottom of my rock. In in the example here, it just terminates into the um, into the bark compost. So this is what I'm saying. It'll look like this. You know, kind of cut short that. That's it. And I also think that this arrangement, I think this arrangement looks nice. Obviously, the small, medium, large is in play, right? Get your large, medium, and small. And check out the color scheme. You know, so to go to a rock yard and get that, yeah, you can find it. But if you're there doing landscaping already as a trade, or you're doing curbing, or you did the stamped concrete or retaining wall, you could be throwing these in. Um, and a lot of times they're leftover concrete. So you could be doing these in your shop um, with leftover um, mud from particular things. You know, prep a piece of foam. You could have them on stock. So it's very useful, very useful. All right. That kind of gives you an overview on that photo. What do we got here? Okay, here's another one. Should we take a drink of water here? Again, sorry guys if I'm lagging late here and um, trying to get you some material here. All right, so. This is a salt and pepper granite boulder. It's interesting. Because it it, it it looks very unnatural to me anyway. Um, it, it's almost too symmetrical. I'll outline it here. Let's just do a quick outline on it. I mean, it, 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 it almost seems rectangular or squarish and the planes on it if, if you're looking at the planes I think it does like this right drops that edge right this goes like this yeah something like that I can turn this down a little bit so you can kind of see the form, see? Switch to another color here. Kind of um, peel back this onion a little bit more. So here's a plane. Switch to a blue. Here's a plane, the underbody. And let's just pick a yellow. And there's a mini plane right here, but just for the most part, you're looking something like that. Right? You got one, two, three. Looks pretty blah, and, and all the edges are soft. All the edges are very soft, um, which in some examples, a little rigidness here and there does add a lot of dimensionality to it so let me go ahead and nuke that and um, turn that back on throw that away and um but check this out what happens if we were to What happens if we're able to put a planter right about there on an angle? 
We'll check that out. All right. So, anyway, I just drew a circle in. So, if that were to, you know, you do something like that. And then from there, you know, from there, then now you could plant your, you know, this, this could be turned into a planter now. And to me, much more dynamic look. And I, I you know, I really like the, um, the softness of the boulder, especially brushed up against the botanicals you know, right there in the foreground. So. All right. So you can kind of see what's going on there. I'm not going to really illustrate it, but I don't know. I think that, that that's a huge sell. Not only that is, again, adding more value to what's already existing in the industry as far as goods. So here we had a boulder. Obviously, that looks like a pretty heavy boulder. You're going to need a small bobcat to kind of bring it in, a little cherry picker or whatnot. But putting a planter pocket in there, now that requires another step in the industry. So the guys at the processing plant, they, they would have to core drill that out. And the property, too, you put a drip line. Here's the other facet to the planter is running an irrigation line through there. So now you could just have it tie into your sprinkler system. So, you know, you take the foam, there's certain channels we can cut into the foam. We run a piece of PEX up there. Lots of different ways you can skin that cat. So, real powerful. Um, I think that could be totally be sold across the United States. And, it, and, it's, and it's attractive. Okay. What else we got here? All right. Okay, here's one. Let me turn this off. Okay. So I thought this was pretty cool. I like how it kind of cut into the, the pathway. Um, I'm sure if that was stamped concrete, that would make that hard. You know, getting up on that edge. Not hard, but an extra step that you got to get the stamps up around in that. Let me blow in some... Let me blow in some weight here and um, see if I can do an illustration over this. Kind of touch on some points. This helps me fog it out. Just takes your focus off. So many other stuff. All right, good enough. All right, so this, this obviously this is a real rock, but one thing that I draws my eye and I'd be careful of it in the industry is this I could almost put a straight line on that and when you're doing artificial rock it's kind of a dead ringer let me delete that show you what it looks like here didn't get away with it this is real rock I mean this is if it's not it fooled me I think the coloring is is exquisite so but anyway that draws my eye right there this is a nice plane. These obviously this is a sharp rock. Again, let's just wrap it with uh, like twine. No, let's probably do something like this. This edge comes up. And let's forget the flowers. Let's just draw through that. Like what what does that top look like? Right? And obviously you got your opening, something like that. That's where your flowers will be planted, right? That's where these are coming out of. Right, but let's 
Spill some color on that side. Just so I thought that was pretty cool. I think the guys doing curbing, guys doing um, flat work. That boulder probably one of the most simpler boulders you can do out there, but you could also mess it up if you don't pay attention to a few things. Um, and that's the beauty of the hands-on classes to kind of work through those problematic areas to make sure it doesn't come out looking faux. Because then it defeats the purpose. Then you might as well get real rock at that point. Because it needs to match up aesthetically and functionality as well. All right. Let's see how many more we got in here. I hope by now you, I'm kind of... Um, Developing a, a point here. Let me nuke these layers. Okay. Let's see why I brought this up. Yeah, I just thought there was a bunch, another um, bunch of interesting items there. Obviously, you got the the treads. The stone treads and rises. And those are really nice, by the way. Um, but that could be really, really um, upsold as well. Same thing with the bench seating. You got the bench off to the left. I think that's cool. I mean, let's zoom in. Look at, I mean, the shapes. They were limited to real rock. I mean, they, they're kind of, they're at the mercy of Mother Nature as opposed to us. We can create that as artisans, you know, and look really good. You know, does it stack up to Mother Nature pound for pound under a microscope? No, it doesn't. But um, if if certain aspects are done correctly, it, it, it does fool most people. Oh, keep that in mind. So you got stamped concrete. We got reeling. Look, now we've gotten reeling, right? They wanted to probably keep that a very naturalistic environment. So you got a lot of stone, you got a lot of um, greenery, botanicals, and then the reeling looks very organic. That's another thing we can get into um, if one wanted that. And how does it last? And what can you do with it? But if they would have put a steel railing in there, from a design perspective, I think it ruins it. You know. So do they have to be? I don't. I mean, obviously that doesn't. I don't know if that passed inspection, depending on how many risers it got, because there's no balustrade within that. So um, I've done projects to where we've done railings, and is the 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 United Building Code still requires um, those parameters or criteria to be met. So, another photo there. And I think I got one more than this one. Now, this one's, this one is, I think, beautiful. This one is beautiful. Reason I like it, it shows. Obviously, the rock is beautiful and the composition is beautiful, but more importantly, it's got a mixture of soft edges and hard edges. And my cup of tea, that's what I like. I like that balance. Um, everything is so sharp and cubed, and you know, 90 degrees. I, I'm seeing a lot of that sometimes in the industry. A lot of 90 degree corners. Um, I, I'm seeing waterfalls and grottos that there's just square. And again, you know, to each his own, it's just personal preference. But um, at least I'm giving you a reason of insight on, at least from my eyes, why I found this very attractive and something that 
offers value as far as you know having that as synthetic you know look at the size of the rock for one to get that in that that's that's a formation that was there that they built around well we could do just the opposite we can build it to spec as opposed to building it around but let me touch on a few things here and for one I'm just going to turn down the opacity of that see how I kind of turn that down this way my my marker will show up a little bit better uh, let's go back to the orange and we'll use the pencil so like I was saying let me go back to the pen yeah that'll work actually Let's go a little brighter. Okay. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing. Okay. So let me just draw some lines. Again, like we're wrapping this with, with twine. Right. Something like this. You get the gist. You don't have to draw every one. But you can see how the planes are coming into play there, right? But look at the angles on that, you know. And that's where carved rock really comes into play. Because, you know, that could be a billet of foam, a rebar and footer, however you want to dice it up. Now... This is what's most interesting, and I will change colors or red. So look how soft this rock is up here. Beautiful balance. You know, there's the topography map of that. And look at all this green in there, it's kind of peppered in throughout that. It's beautiful. And and I and I'm not bashing anybody again, it's just really preference. But the square the square rock features to me that's what the screams fall immediately. And because a lot of times, even if it is sharp rock, let's turn the opacity back up on this and kind of jump in kind of get into the weeds on this thing here. So, and we'll zoom in. So, there's soft edges in here. Okay? And for one, look at this shape. So, I mean, obviously, to do that with panels, um, you can do it, but that's a lot of cutting because there's a lot of planes right there, which means now you need more substructure to support that, the ins and outs, unless the panel has been integrated with that. But let's look at this area up here. You know, you couldn't, that would be very hard to do that with a panel. You'd have to segment it. But now it's cutting into your time. Look at all that softness. And when it's like that, and you shockrete that, we'll just go foam core. You know, that's that's a relatively fast texture. There's not a lot of fracturing there. Let's turn it off. I wrote that on that layer. Let's go back there. Okay. So, there's not a lot of fracturing on that rock. I mean, you got this one fracture... That runs up here. And look at that. It could be a planter pocket. You know, that, that could be expanded upon. This could be a series of planter pockets. You know, one there, one there. Your irrigation line runs up. So they're fed. You don't even have to worry about it. Your drainage just goes down into Mother Earth. I mean, that could be really beautiful. 
What? And this could be a retaining wall. I mean, look at that right there. Look at the look at the elevation. Let's go to one below. You know, this is X amount of feet. Look at the elevation on that. You know, that back side of the wall could be retaining soil. Beautiful. I just, again, I thought it was good contrast, let alone the meditation center that they built here. Um, totally beautiful. Obviously, you got this curved feature here. Um, nice arrangement of rock. Again, I think this is a formation just based on the size. Um, one's, this one over here seems to be way more eroded than this one over here. But look at all the textures on that. Beautiful. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Just kept it kind of brief, but at least I wanted to kind of, um, I guess, start, hopefully get on a string of recording more videos, but touching on some of the planter shapes that I want to start posting. So be on the lookout for some different shapes and studies. I, I, I urge you guys to follow along. Go out, look at some rock boulders, go on Google Images, look at uh, small boulders, boulder planters, things like that. Stimulate your, your visual library and, um, you know, start sketching out some ideas. They don't have to be pretty, but you're just, you know, communicating your ideas on paper and um, catalog them and expand upon them. All right, guys. Happy carving. Be good. Take care.